Imagine you're standing in the batter's box on a beautiful summer day. You're the batter. The count is three balls and one strike. It's a hitter's count. You're looking to swing at a good pitch in the zone. The pitch is released. You see a fastball coming in high, but you think you can put your bat on it. You take a swing, and you swing right under it. Two strikes. Full count. You step back in, dialed in for this next pitch. It's coming in high. It looks just like the last pitch, and you're not going to fall for that same trick again. You decide to lay off of it, and at that last second, the pitch spins off right through the middle of the zone. A curveball. Strike three. So what happened here? This is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. This is a perfect example of effective pitch tunneling. Let's jump into it. To begin with, let's define what pitch tunneling is. It's the idea that two consecutive pitches can look nearly identical through a point in which a batter must decide whether they are going to swing or not. And to me, it can really be broken up into two separate concepts that work together. A pitch calling concept and a pitch design concept. The pitch calling aspect of tunneling is going to be exactly what we saw in that last example. Utilizing the image that is fresh in a batter's eye to fool them. Our previous example is a pretty common one. You often pair higher fastballs with breaking balls. Then the other concept is a pitch design concept. This is making sure a pitcher replicates his motion through each one of his different pitches. To me, you can't do the first concept without mastering the second one. Say that your arm slows down when you throw a breaking ball. The batter is then going to be able to pick that up early, and you won't be able to effectively tunnel any of your pitches. So that's what pitch tunneling is, but why does it work? Let's dig into the math of the timing for each individual pitch. On average, the time it takes a ball traveling at 90 miles an hour to cross home plate from the pitcher's hand is about 400 milliseconds, or four thousandths of a second. That's pretty quick. And to put that into perspective, it takes you the exact same amount of time to blink. Going even further, it takes your brain about 100 milliseconds to process images. So now you've already cut out a fourth of your time, allowing your brain to register when the pitch is occurring. Now this next yellow line, until home plate, is the amount of time it takes the average athlete to swing, which is about 175 milliseconds. That leaves the batter with a tiny 125 milliseconds to determine what type of pitch is coming, where it's going to end up, and oh yeah, if they should swing or not. So how does tunneling fit into all of this? Well, if you have two consecutive pitches that look identical through the circled point, and then one takes off to the outside part of the plate, and the other to the inside, it's going to be nearly impossible for a batter to adjust. So after learning all of this, try telling me again that hitting a baseball isn't the hardest thing to do in sports, and this concept of tunneling is only making it harder on batters. So if you liked today's video, please leave a like, click the video on the top right if you'd like to see more of my content, and subscribe for more weekly baseball animations posted every Tuesday.